What's up everybody? It is Matt from Electric All Wheel and we have Turn Burn with us. We're going to add a second battery. We already have one, so if you want to check out that video and the plug and play kit from Electric All Wheel for a second battery here on the frame, we're actually going to remount the balancer which is inside this bag and then we are going to drill some holes so we can get a solid mount for a down tube battery. Should be easy enough. Yeah. Have you ever used a rib nut tool? I never have. Well, today is going to be the day. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary. And if you're in the area, join the Facebook groups, e-bikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Have you posted your pictures yet? They're coming. Jeremy promises he's going to post some pictures in the group so you can see where he rides. Get in that group, make an event, and go for a ride with your e-bike friends. Here we go. Since we already have our second battery installed, all we need to do is take the balancer out of the bag and then just remove this battery. But we're also gonna need to mount the balancer here. And for that, um, I have some zip ties. We're gonna wrap up some of this wiring. We already have a zip tie down here. And so we're gonna probably cut this loose, get the bundle of wiring together again, just as it is coming out. Some of this is the factory rad wiring and there's actually a mount right there you see okay. that yep yeah it's actually it is an actual mount to the frame so if we need it we can get it but right now we like the full wrap just like this one so we're we're essentially just removing this so we can get our second battery connection placed so that when we move up to the crossbar uh we will have a electrical mounting spot we'll have a connection to make for the battery and from there, we'll show you what it looks like with just the battery mounted with some pretty heavy duty straps, which we like. And then we're actually going to drill it out. So you want to open this up, make sure the battery doesn't fall out. And it will, so just be cautious. And then just pull all that out of there. And then unhook the battery from the balancer. And then the black. There you go. That's it. And you can let this down. Yeah. Now we just need to take this off. That's all right. It's all right. Down. Yeah. Just lay this down on the ground. Right. The balancer setup is already there. If you're doing your full install, just revert, refer to the other video. We'll leave a link to that in the description below. We'll also leave a link for this battery. You guys know this is our favorite battery <laughs> ever. We use this battery all the time, everywhere. Ultimately, the placement will be like this. And the reason I want it like that is that so water will drip down on the box if it does get wet. Uh, we're going to rely on some of the XT60 connection to be good, but honestly, this should not be exposed to water. That's, that's where we're headed with this. If you're going to do it, you'll probably want to wrap this entire body with a larger shrink wrap once you get it hooked up and your connection is made before you make this somehow external. For the principle of the matter, and just to get it done, we are going to leave this exposed, but it's worth noting that some maintenance in terms of protection for weatherproofing and waterproofing goes a long way. And then you have to be mindful of where your second battery connection is. <sighs> this first one, just go ahead. We're going to capture these and we're going to leave this one loose because that's the second battery. Yep. Right. And so that's your, your grab. We're going to leave it loose. Now you want to see if you can get some of your stuff in there. Just push it all the way up through. Just tighten it down. It's good enough. We're not wrenching on it. Now we've got a good look at what it, it looks like. It, so go ahead and we'll zip tie around the body. And you got your fancy gun. There you go.
Perfect. Okay, this is the high long battery. And as you can see, we have these mounts that are on here. These are bottle cage mounts with nice thick straps and they're the longer straps that allow you to go around a bigger body uh, crossbar. But I, the reason I like these is because the way they're contoured and then the material is really sticky. It's got a lot of friction and it holds tight. This, this one is actually mounted to the mount with the two screws here and then there's one screw in this one but when it's tightened down with the strap, it does the job. So I wanted to demonstrate this as a second battery. This is not difficult at all. You just bring up your strap and as a unit, just run it through. So we use this mount and that durability on a lot of our bikes, and I would say that I'm very happy with it. If this becomes your only bike, you can actually cut off this excess. Otherwise, we would just roll it up and tuck it. But the straps on this Velcro are very durable, and I can get a very nice tight fit on here, which is good. And then I would just wrap it right here, but yep. we're not going to leave that on. We are actually going to take it off. We also wanted to show you, this is with the seat all the way down, right? So you have to make sure to maintain your distance here. And that's going to be something we look for when we drill out this frame. Yep. And that's that. We're going to need to take out um, these bottle cage screws so what i want you to notice is that these are not the screws that come with it we needed a screw that would actually slide uh, the battery could slide over the head of the screw which doesn't work with the factory screw so what i'm going to do here is just get down a piece of paper that i can write on Perfect. I'm going to take this battery and look right. at it in terms of where I think it will fit well. And what I need to know is that since my paper is not long enough, perhaps you will get a longer paper. Uh, but I also know that I can turn it up in this realm and know that the head of the mounting plate is generally in this area. So I'm just looking for a line to start. And I'm also making sure that I have clearance for my seat all the way down. So I feel like that is good. There's enough separation distance so that the headset will turn. So I'm just going to leave it right there and then kind of roll it over and then give it a mark. And then I'm going to take my mount off. And from there, I'm going to move to my mounting holes. And those are here. I noticed that this slides, so I'm going to be cautious of that. So I'm going to push it all the way up. I've got the edge of the mount here, so I know that that's a good fit for the battery. And then I'm just going to circle out these areas. I'm going to take my digital calipers, give them a zero. I'm 
And then what I'm going to do is measure what's the thickness. If I dip this, I can get the full depth of the body and then also get as close to straight across. And with that reading is 56.1. So at 28 is going to be my mid. And then I also know that if that is 28, I want my mount to be adjustable, so I'll run center here. So there's my cross. That's where I'm drilling on this one. Fifty-two, so twenty-six. You and I talked about the seven millimeter drill, yes. the bit, right? Yeah. So you need this so that it fits these rib nuts. These are stainless and we got some coated ones so that it doesn't oxidize terribly with the frame of the bike. But this is the final drill size. We're going to pile it with a smaller bit here so we can hit center and then we'll drill out with this. From here, we're just laying on center and we have a really small bit just so that we can make sure to get in there. And we can go ahead and take off our template. two of them. So what you do is you take your rivet nut tool and you just open it up and you see how this extends out. Uh -huh. So you just screw that on there. Now this end is actually the screw. So if you spin it, you oh, see it on. Yeah. So you can hold that while you're putting it on there. But generally speaking, that's it. And now, with it down all the way, the rivet nut tool, these handles are spread out. The game here is to put this inside the hole and then smash the handles back together again. And then unscrew your tool. And there you have it. So you go ahead and screw it out. And then you just kind of hold your backing screw and then put that on there. And then you get it in. Set it flush and then smash your stuff together. And then unscrew it. Let's clean, my friend. And then now we will just go ahead and mount the battery. So I did get some longer screws that I default with my rib nut, but these are just M5s. They're hex heads. You're looking at about 19 millimeters, 22 head to end.
So you want to hold the mount centered, right, while you screw these down. on the other side and go ahead and plug it in. In? In. Perfect. So we can zip tie this and then we know that this is secure down at the bottom. Came on nice. Enough clearance. Set it up. Clean it up here. You like it? I like it. Well, Jeremy, I think I think that's the one. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the dual battery setup with the Rivna installation for a down tube battery on the crossbar of a Rad Power Bikes Six Plus. And Jeremy was here for the glory. Uh, we did move the dual battery balancer and then just zip tied it there. There are some thoughts in terms of just weatherproofing and making sure that that's good, but uh, we want to say that it's worthwhile to get your stuff wrapped, especially if you're riding out in the weather. But for us, this is where it's going to be. Down to battery is a 15 amp hour, so an additional 15 amp hours. The math on that is as is. My control constant, 25 watt hours per mile. So take your voltage times your amp hours and then divide that by 25 and then you will have your distance. I am pretty excited about the way that looks. Uh, I hope the communities don't crucify us for doing this. Uh, well, good, man. Some people may question why in the world would you drill out a Rad Rover 6 Plus? So, why not? Why not, yeah.